In this video, we will go over problem number five from the 2002 AP Calculus exam. A container has the shape of an open right circular cone, as shown in the figure above. The height of the container is 10 centimeters, and the diameter of the opening is also 10 centimeters. Water in the container is evaporating so that its depth, h, is changing at a constant rate of negative 3 over 10 centimeters per hour. Part A says find the volume of water in the container when the height is 5 centimeters. However, knowing the height does not automatically tell us the radius, which we will need in order to calculate the volume. So what do we do? Oftentimes, when you have a tank that is partially filled, you end up with similar triangles. So notice that we have this larger blue triangle formed by the tank itself, and then the smaller red triangle formed by the height of the water inside the tank. These triangles will be similar, and we can use the properties of similar triangles to find relationships between the radius and the height. Since the diameter of the opening of the container is 10, I know that the radius at the top would be 5. So this is 5. And we know the height of the container is 10, so this is 10. Meanwhile, on the smaller triangle where the water level is, we will just call this R and H. You can easily use corresponding sides to set up a proportion if you follow a pattern like small over big equals small over big. For example, small over big would be r over 5. And that should equal another small over big, in this case, h over 10. So if I wanted to express r as a function of h, I could just multiply both sides by 5. So this would be r is equal to 5h over 10. In other words, the radius is 1 half the height. This relationship will be very useful when it's time to find the volume at this particular water level. We're told that the volume is 1 third pi r squared h. But this is one too many variables to solve for the volume. Um, we know that the height is 5 centimeters, so that's covered. But what about r? Well, since we know that the uh, radius will always be 1 half the height, then uh, when the height is 5 centimeters, then the radius will be 1 half times 5, or you could say 5 over 2. So this is what we can substitute for the radius. So the volume will be 1 third pi times 5 over 2 squared, and then times the height, which is 5. And uh, let's go ahead and say the units now, which will make this a valid answer. Since the units of length are centimeters, then volume will be centimeters cubed. So guess what? This is a valid answer right here for a free response question. Um, we will go ahead and simplify it uh, just for fun, but we don't have to. So here's a simplified version of the answer to part A. Part B says, find the rate of change of the volume of water in the container with respect to time when h is equal to 5 centimeters. Indicate units of measure. I always like to start by making an inventory of all the facts that I know so far. Start by writing down what you are supposed to find. It says, find the rate of change of the volume. So that's dv dt when h is equal to 5 centimeters. So we know that uh, for the moment in question, h is equal to 5 centimeters. But what else do we know? In the setup of the problem, we were told that the depth h is changing at a constant rate of negative 3 tenths centimeters per hour. So that's dh dt. 
So here's our inventory so far. Did we learn anything in part A that might be useful here in part B? So actually we learned two important things. Um, we learned the relationship between R and H. R equal, equals one half H. So let's add that to our inventory. We also learned that the volume was 125 pi over 12 at a height of 5, but I don't think we're going to need that fact. But, I mean, if you wanted to write it down, it wouldn't hurt. We are being asked to find dv dt, the rate of change of the volume. So we definitely need to start out with the relationship for volume, which we were told is one-third pi r squared h. This formula is written in terms of two variables, r and h. Um, it would be better if we could get this down to one variable, and I see that we have a value for h, and we have dh dt. So it sounds like h is very popular. So if we could somehow replace this r with an h, that would be an upgrade. And we have the relationship that we found in part a. r is one half of h. So let's make that substitution right now. So that will give us volume is equal to one-third pi r squared h, but instead of r, we will do the one-half h. If you square both of these factors, you will get the following. One-third pi, um, let's see, one-half squared is one-fourth. So one-fourth h squared. h squared times h is h to the third power. One-fourth times one-third is one-twelfth. So I'm going to go ahead and write this as pi over 12, right? Because that's your one-twelfth times pi. h to the third power. That's a nice, tidy formula. But we need dv dt. So let's take the derivative of both sides. If you take the derivative of the left side with respect to t, that is simply dv dt. Um, I'm going, going to ignore the constant and just put down pi over 12. And then the derivative of h to the third power um, will be 3h squared. But because this is not a t, I need to do the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which is dh dt. So I'm going to simplify this. 3 goes into 12 four times. So we have dv dt is equal to pi over 12, I'm sorry, pi over 4, h squared uh, dh dt. Let's check our inventory for things to substitute. For example, h is equal to 5, and dh dt is negative 3 over 10. So we can substitute 5 for h and negative 3 over 10 for dh dt. Um, actually, if we put units on here, this will be a valid answer for a free response question. So the volume is going to be in cubic centimeters. And this is the change in volume over change in time. Time was being measured in hours. So this is a valid answer. If this were the actual exam, I would recommend that you leave your answer in this ugly form, just in case you would make a mistake in the simplification process. But since we are just practicing, let's go ahead and simplify and your answer would look like this. Part C. Show that the rate of change of the volume of water in the container due to evaporation is directly proportional to the exposed surface area of the water. What is the constant of proportionality? First of all, let's define a new variable. We will let A equal the exposed surface area. Remember that if V is directly proportional to A, then that means V is equal to K times A, where K is called the constant of proportionality. 
but we're being asked to show that the rate of change of the volume is directly proportional to the surface area. So we need to show that dv dt is equal to something times the area. Let's start by finding the surface area, which of, of course will equal pi r squared. Looking back at part b, I see that we found this equation for dv dt. I'm going to come back to this in a minute, but for right now pay attention to the fact that h is our only variable. In this area formula we have r. We don't want r, we need an h. So what are we going to do? Remember back in part b we found this relationship between r and h. Let's make this substitution. So I can write area is equal to pi times, and I can put one half h instead of r. So my formula for the exposed surface area will be pi times one fourth h squared. I'm just squaring each of these factors. And uh, pi times one fourth is just pi over four. So this is pi over four h squared. Now let's compare that to our formula for dv dt and see what we've got. So here again is that formula from part b for dv dt. I'm just going to copy this down below. As you look back and forth between the area formula and the dv dt formula, look how much they have in common. All of this is common to both formulas. In fact, they're the same except for the dv dt formula has this extra dh dt. All right, I have a feeling that this is going to be that constant of proportionality. So with that in mind, I'm going to switch these around so that the k value can be first. To show that dv dt was directly proportional to area, I wanted dv dt equals something times area. Well, notice that the area formula is right here. This yellow part is area. So I can just make this substitution. I'm going to replace this expression, this yellow expression, with a because they are equivalent. Now I'm almost done. I have dv dt equals something times the area. If only this were a number and not some expression. Don't forget that back in the original setup of the problem, we're told that the depth h is changing at a constant rate of negative 3 over 10 centimeters per hour. This is dh dt. So I can simply replace the expression dh dt with negative 3 over 10. So I have now shown that dv dt is directly proportional to a by writing it as something times a, negative 3 over 10 times a. And that k value is negative 3 over 10. So in summary, we write the constant of proportionality is negative 3 over 10.